behind me is uh, one of the views that I have on my way to work each day. Uh, down there you have uh, Gordon's Bay and the Strand. Uh, this is False Bay. Uh, out here, absolutely uh, beautiful, a stunning, stunning view. Day like today where it's a bit cloudy and windy and uh, the, uh, the cold front is blowing and the, the view is not that clear, but this is just uh, such a beautiful place. So I stopped here quickly uh, just to really ask you uh, a question. Now today's uh, vlog really is just that, it's a mini vlog and uh, I'm wanting to uh, engage you to get a little bit of your insight and wisdom. Yesterday I attended a lecture by uh, one of the research professors at Stellenbosch, Professor Pumla Gobordo Marikizela, and uh, she's an expert in social psychology and in particular um, her background is in reconciliation and forgiveness. Uh, she worked in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and uh, yesterday she spoke on the topic of witnessing humanity and the ongoing power of uh, the legacy of trauma in South Africa and how that tends to dehumanize people and uh, how that can lead to violence and the point that she made was to say that um, some of what we're seeing in South Africa today particularly in relation to service delivery protests and uh, the fees must fall student protests the sort of violent reactions the breaking of property the burning uh, of, uh, of, of assets like cars and buildings but even uh, bodily harm being caused uh, she says that she can understand why this happens. She doesn't sanction it or agree with it, but she understands why it happens because of the legacy of trauma uh, that is present in many South African persons. Now, what she's saying there, she's using, using the work or the ideas of Franz Fanon, um, who said that uh, when uh, trauma becomes entrenched historically and it's supported by law over a number of generations, people begin to uh, live into this trauma, they begin to experience it as so oppressive as a form of violence, ongoing violence against them that's perpetrated, that they find that their only plausible response to the violence is to react violently, so to engage power with uh, a, a form of power, to engage the slow violence of poverty and uh, the degradation of human dignity with another form of violence that destabilizes the power in society. Now I can say to you that uh, understanding, that idea, she doesn't uh, agree with that form of violence even though she says she, she un understands it. Uh, that idea to me as a Christian uh, seems, uh, it seems so problematic, so, uh, so flawed but somehow I can understand it. I can understand that if you are continually facing uh, the violence of abuse and particularly a kind of abuse which uh, finds sanction within institutions and laws that surely you must get to a point where you want to react against that with some form of violence. Now what Gobordo Marikizela suggests is that we need a higher order in order to subvert violence and I heard echoes of the work of Walter Wink in what she was saying although she didn't quote Wink um, Walter Wink is a theologian in that book Engaging the Powers where he said violent revolution is the weakest form of revolution because what it does is it changes the rulers without changing the rules. And what she advocated for was uh, the recognition of empathy or the enactment of empathy between persons. And she spoke of two kinds of empathy. This has been uh, a part of my own work in, in my re most recent research where I've tried to facilitate between black and white South African Christians uh, what are known as the mediators of positive intergroup contact. Uh, empathy in particular is one, uh, the lowering of anxiety and the increasing of empathy uh, is what I've been working on. You can see the video that I did on that on, uh, on intergroup contact. But um, this notion of, first of all, facilitating affective empathy. Now by affect we mean that emotional state of being able to identify with the pain and struggle of another person, to feel something of what it is that they are going through in life, to be able to, to place yourself emotionally uh, in their world and in their shoes. She says that once you have that kind of affective empathy, once you can imagine the pain that another person feels, you can move to cognitive empathy, uh, the mental constructs that are necessary, necessary to deconstruct uh, how we think about issues such as abuse or the slow systemic violence of poverty. So I'd love to get your ideas on this. Uh, I tend uh, to, to support uh, pacifism and non-violence. I have a student actually yesterday, and I'll put a link in the show notes, who wrote a beautiful article uh, in which he made a case to say that any form of violence used to address injustice uh, cannot be valid because it is unjust uh, by itself. But I do have another student 
uh, who's questioning that discourse, who's saying that very often, it, particularly in Christianity and in social justice, we use uh, the language of peace, pacifism, to silence those or to disempower those who are trying to work for their liberation. So I want to hear from you. What do you think? Is violence ever justifiable? And, and if it is, what forms of violence are justifiable to subvert uh, the kind of slow, systemic, historical violence of poverty uh, and, and uh, the degradation of human dignity? If it's not sustainable, if violence is not acceptable, then what are the alternatives? What else can we do to address this injustice? So remember, it's not a lecture, it's just a thought. Uh, I hope the wind noise hasn't been too bad in this video. Uh, let's see. But uh, I need to hop in my car and get to the office. I have uh, a postgraduate seminar today and some classes and meetings. And of course, next week is the Global Network for Public Theology. We have Rowan Williams and Will Storer and Barney Pachana, uh, Pit Nodia, uh, Stan Duplessy, uh, and Dirkie Smith is our keynote speakers uh, at that event. So uh, that's going to be a really wonderful event, and I'll post some content from that. So thanks for watching. Uh, please give the video a like if you found it useful. Engage me in the comments. Uh, hook up with me on social media at Digital Dion or on my website, dionfoster.com. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch up again soon.